Hey everyone, Astro Nibble here, and we're going to have episode six of our Princess Connect series on where we're at in progress wise. Oh! All right, so let's go over here. Let's go to profile, I believe. So our total collection power right now is 654,728. That's not too bad. And stats wise, of course, we've done all the funky fresh stuff. We're not doing so great in arena anymore. Um, yeah, I just keep losing. I'm way behind. I should have Reno, but I don't. So it is what it is. But still have a lot of stuff to do. Only got up to 4 149 on the last Tower of Luna. So, kind of sucks. <clears throat> but, you know, it is what it is. I mean, I get busy and, you know, life is what it is. So, there's that. But I'm not too, uh, you know, I'm not too, I'm not technically displeased. Uh, obviously, we're at max level right now, which, what is the level cap right now? 4 145, yeah. So, and we've got all three of the first three six-star characters. Oh! Yeah, so that's good. Now, the problem is, like I was mentioning before Reno, um, so bloody close. So bloody close. We only have one <clears throat> more shard, but in two days, I haven't been able to get it, and I just haven't felt like spending another 50 jewels just to get a refresh, just to potentially get zero more shards to drop. So I'm hoping as I record this, that by the next day's gameplay, I, I have her unlocked. Once I get her unlocked, I'll do the usual video that I do uh, going through the six star quest and stuff. But yeah, I do need to start working on getting her, whatchamacallit up, uncapped and stuff. In fact, where are we at now? Yeah, so starting to kind of fall short on those a bit too um <clears throat> but anyway so yeah that gets me a little bit i just have to remember to refine her before i start using her um which is fine i can do that now my clan tells me that llama is going to be the next one to come up during the recent hard node 2x shard drop I did get her from three star to four star and then <clears throat> a little bit beyond uh, eh, about halfway, a little bit beyond halfway. Um, we got a few shards last night when there wasn't any 2x drops. So, but it's going to take a while. I mean, I would need during the 2x shard drop deal in the hard nodes. I did spend 50 cores on all four nodes to do the single refresh that you can do. Um, so yeah, I really pushed hard, but you know. again, it is what it is. I mean, looking back, if, you know, if I were starting over now, obviously I would have worked on, I would have kept working on those initial six star characters rather than what I did, but I don't technically necessarily regret what I did. What I did, you know, worked out pretty well for me. I mean, my roster is pretty good. I've had some pretty good RNG in the gotcha. There's a lot of gotcha characters I've had to pass on, though, just because I just don't have the currency unless I want to whale harder. Or go full Kraken, and I don't want to do that, so... I don't mind spending a little bit of money in the game, but, you know... Not gonna go full Kraken. But, <clears throat> yeah, the, the weaknesses in this lineup... Like, we're doing clan battle right now, and... Actually, just take a look at that real quick. <clears throat> this is the current clan battle. I guess could we could have gone the other way, but so you know, in terms of where we're at in the battle, which ends in a few minutes as I record this, or like an hour or two. Um, you know, we're at 580. Even if we fall some, you know, last month we were 644. So yeah, we've done as a clan, we're doing amazing, and we are on the 12th lap. I th maybe someone can kill it and start the 13th, but I kind of doubt it. I mean, this is kind of one of my frustrations is that, you know, I was doing good, doing good, doing good. And then in this last run, 
it really is hard and everyone in my clan says yeah for a casual clan we're doing really good because you know at this level when when it gets 3x damage and 3x whatever else uh that you have to start going in and start using those timelines to really start getting ahead and you know we're just not that hardcore and i would never be that hardcore i mean it already frustrates me enough that this game encourages sandbagging and i hate that with a passion uh, on one level it's like oh okay yeah fine you know my kokoro hey look oh goody i didn't have to rank her above 10 isn't that lovely and just one little piece of gear yeah that saves me a lot on resources and stuff but if you're not actively see i'm not hardcore but i'm highly active and i want to do the best that i can do and so you know you've got the guide what i call uh the guide from hell and you know we're looking at you know chaco's deal and you know this is his analysis his and other people's analysis on where to gear up characters where to star them up to how to do it you know where they can be used now that stuff is pretty useful for sure well technically all of it's useful but like as we scroll down here and we go into the mid-range stuff and you see like oh well you caught her you should keep her at 12-1 and it's like what that doesn't make sense and then you know um we got kokoro here who's you know listed as ex for clan battles and triple s ranked for defense and you know but you keep her at 10 1. now there are some deals where if you know what you're doing you can do these but then you keep her unique at level one you see five star unique level uh, uh six star and i think the only reason they they say unlock the ue is just so you can get the six star could be wrong there but that's what it feels like to me um but yeah it's just nuts that they kind of expect you to sandbag like that but you know because she's so good at six stars she doesn't get good until six stars you know the game i mean the, the they're forced to say yeah take her all the way up to six but there are characters like this summer sarah and it's like keep her at three it doesn't make sense the natural instinct is get them up to five star which is their max but the way this is going it's like you, you know don't do that keep them as low as possible and i just hate sandbagging but anyway enough ranting about uh the sandbagging it, it just kind of irks me <clears throat> and it kind of came up in the clan battle today because i've over geared her based on the requirements and i stopped when i realized it but you know it, it does hurt because she's not procking her her ub as much so she's not healing as much as she could <clears throat> and so because she's not healing as much because she's not doing uh what she needs to do as much then she becomes less useful and then you're, you're not going to do as much damage or you're going to be in more of a risk of everyone dying or some characters dying. And you know, that's that's one of the, the issues I have because probably I have several characters that are not quite done correctly. Um, I tried to use the guide, but a lot sometimes I just forget because you get into this habit of like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the natural instinct is raise them up, raise them up, raise them up, raise them up, raise them up. And that is the wrong instinct. You have to actively study this guide if you want to play the game correctly now if you don't care about how much damage you do yeah fine and like i said even though i'm not hardcore and i'm never going to do timelines i still want to do the most damage i can and help my clan mates right that's just natural but you know i still have to study that stupid guide and you know i really need to learn their kits better but this game is not designed at least for a person like me to easily remember their skills i have to actually memorize their skills versus like say in a star wars galaxy of heroes or marvel strike force where you're actively using all their skills and so you're constantly looking at oh, okay this is what this character's basic does this is what their um <clears throat> ultimate does because you're actively using them whereas in this game the only thing you have control over if you want is when their ultimate the union burst is done otherwise 
these two skills right here go off whenever you have no control over it but people who are doing these timelines they're like okay well void access goes then this other character i can do this i can blast their universe because it will do 10.5 percent more damage and it's like ugh. you know i don't want to micromanage that hard in an I, in an auto game especially now i don't mind it if it's i have full control over the team and it's me making the decisions fine you know but in a full auto team where the only thing you control is when you fire off the ub no i don't I, i'm just yeah i don't know it's just yeah, anyway enough ranting i mean i'm, I'm a little bit salty because once clan battle is first when it's fun when it first starts for me because then it's all about how much damage can i do it's not about can i keep a bloody team alive by the time we're at where we're at my thought is how can i keep a bloody team alive because i can't keep a pure damage team alive because the thing will just wipe them out so i'm also frustrated while we're on the salt kick um yeah i just i need to be able to farm her um she's supposed to be like a core mage character in clan battle and yeah in the early rounds of clan battle when when the beasts aren't doing that much damage yeah she can be pretty good but unfortunately all of her um skills have demerits on them where she basically Cuts off her nose to spite her face, in a, in a sense. <clears throat> so, it's like, the more damage she does, the more the worse she hurts herself. So, I need the five stars. But even then, from what I've heard, she's still RNG heavily dependent. You know, you can do trials, and she does amazing. She's your top killer in clan battle. And then you say, okay, do it for real. And she gets killed like right out of the gate so she's still very rng dependent you know and that kind of sucks and but you see i pumped a lot of resources into her because i don't have a lot of other mage options and she was one that was supposed to be very useful and likewise let's see where's the other one yeah she's supposed to be a core mage too but her kit is such that she bloody damages herself now i suppose i could rank her up in fact i probably i may but i just uh, there's a part of me it's like why bother you know she she starts off good but then her skills are such that it's like hey lower my own physical defense to nothing lower my own magical defense to nothing okay So she basically becomes like, you know, she's a glass cannon, basically. That's what they both are. They're glass cannons. And it kind of sucks, so. But I digress. Um, I need to figure out. I need another. I've been working on Anne. Supposedly, she's pretty good in clan battle. In fact, some of my clan members are sharing her. So. Um, and then on the physical side. I don't think I'm going to worry too much about that because the meta is going to shift it to mage. It's already shifting that way. Um, but it's going to become more and more of a two mage team. So I need, I need, I need more variety uh, in terms of characters that can be used in clan battle, but who are also mage. So um, I'll have to consult the guide and then look through this column here. And see, okay, like, see, Anne, I start working on Anne because she was core plus mage. And so, all right, fine, we'll start working on her. But then, you know, it's like, now, I, but I've also got to be careful. Because if, as you look... It doesn't say why if, if she should stay at three uh, stars but i've got her at four and i'm going to take her to five people in my clan have her at five so i'm going to take her to five and you know hopefully have another um decent mage but i need to i need to look through this list and find other mages that i can use who are doing damage 
I mean, I have her, but she's like a big healer. She kind of helped. She kind of helped in a deal, but I didn't do much damage though. Because I need them instead of having big damage dealers to keep me alive, so. But I see, you know, there are other, you know, core plus mages. I've got her, you know, I've got her. So, you know, some of them are, I've got her. Some of them are, you know, pretty, um, Obvious. I don't have a uh, Halloween Kyoka, sadly. I just couldn't pull for her. Um, but anyway, yeah. So that's kind of what I need to do. I need to <clears throat> to look for other characters who I can use in a mage lineup. See, I've got her, thankfully. Um, like I said, I was working on her. Got her, but you know, it's hard to. You know, you could spend an hour or two trying to figure out what the heck to do with these characters. But anyway. It is what it is, so I'm, I'm rambling now, and I do apologize, but um, just a real quick look to, so we don't waste all your time, but yeah. This is kind of where we're at character-wise, and in terms of gear, most of their gear is either at 14.6 or 15.3 max, depending on what the guide says. So that's where they are at, and, and it's not until we start getting, like I said, I overgeared her based on the guide, so, you know, way overgeared her. Ditto her. Um, overgeared them, but um, yeah. Working on getting stars for her with the clan battle, but you see, it's still gonna take a while. But I need her to get five stars. But usually, I, if I need a second Makoto, I, I borrow someone's, and she's proven pretty nice. But I gotta get that fifth star on her, um, and then we'll be pretty good. Need to get the fifth star on her, uh, need to get the fourth and fifth star on her. My goodness, that, that, but they're physical. They're physical characters, so that's why there hasn't been much of a push because everything's shifting to mage, but anyway. So anyway, uh, let me know what you think, gang, in the comments. You know, what characters would you work on next in terms of clan battle, in terms of arena, uh, in terms of uh, PvE content and stuff? Because um, I'm curious to know. That's, that's how I learn. Uh, I learned through those of you who actually know and are in the game. So like, subscribe, all the other stuff, and we'll see you in the next video.